Hargeisa, the capital of a self-proclaimed country which in the eyes of the world does not exist, Somaliland. It's also the second largest city in the Horn of Africa, after Mogadishu, capital of the neighbouring Somalia. More than 30 years ago, in May 1991, Somaliland broke free from Somalia and declared its independence. But the memories of the war between two enemy brothers is still present in everyone's mind. Somali military has been dropping the bomb, you know, so civilians are Gaza from Argeza. When they escape to the Utopia, they're bombing and they're killing for innocent people, children and adult women, you know. So that's recognizing for the people they kill for Somali authority, you know, Siad Barre. But the two countries have not always been enemies. In the beginning of the 1960s, during the decolonization of the region, Somaliland, a British protectorate, and Somalia, a former Italian colony, managed to unite to form one country, the Republic of Somalia. But after the army of Mohamed Siad Barre came to power in 1969 following a coup that overthrew the Somali Republic, the situation changed. The latter would exploit the populations of the north for the benefit of those of the south where it came from. The separatist desires of the Somaliland people, who wanted to overthrow the dictator's regime, were strongly felt. There was a lot of uh, oppress oppression going on, uh, coming from Somalia, because at the time the president was um, from Somalia, um, Mohamed Siad Barre, and Somaliland wanted to just retreat from the Union and become Somaliland again. And it was after a huge struggle where thousands of people died that Somaliland was able to get its country back together and taking it its um, independence. Since then, Somalia has sunk into anarchy while Somaliland lives in peace. Salma Sheikh definitely represents the future, but also the spirit of this democracy, at least in its present form, where more than 99% of its citizens are Muslim. Three years ago, she created The Review, the first English-language news magazine about the country and the first media in Somaliland to be founded and run by a woman. The 30-year-old had a chance to study in Great Britain before coming back down to settle in the land where she was born and where everything remains to be done. Schools are not compulsory. Um, so whoever wants to send their children to school sends them uh, to school and whoever doesn't want to send them does not. Education is an issue in Somaliland, to be honest. Schools are already here, but they still overall the quality of the education is not really that good. Even though the former British colony has a government, army, parliament, autonomous institutes, free elections, its own currency, and one of the safest and most peaceful territories on the African continent, Somaliland still remains one of the poorest countries on the planet. improvements on um, infrastructure of roads, bridges, um, health, um, education as well, uh, job creation for the youth, because Somaliland is, uh, you know, the majority of the population is actually young people, youth, under the, under the age of 35. You can imagine when the 70 or 75 percent of the uh, population is young people who are at the age of, uh, you know, uh, uh, production, but they, they don't have jobs. The main economic resource of Somaliland is breeding of cattle and its trade abroad which would generate 70 percent of the total income of the country. This cattle market, located in Hargeisa, is the largest in the region. From morning to night, they buy and sell cows, sheep, 
but above all else, camels. Here, a camel sells for between 700 and 1,000 US dollars, a very significant sum of money for merchants. The Emirates did not hesitate in 2018 to invest nearly half a billion dollars to modernize the port of Berbera, located less than 200 kilometers from Hargeisa. In Somaliland sites, the creation of tens of thousands of jobs and the opportunity to become the main gateway to East Africa to the detriment of their neighboring Somalia. investment in Somaliland is a good move and it has a very you know great potential to become you know the hub for the rest of Africa to connect with Africa trade-wise. But the absence of international recognition considerably slows down the development of this Muslim state with a population of about six million people. In fact Somaliland has no rights to loans from the World Bank, IMF and African Development Bank in order to improve the social situation of its population and to develop its infrastructure. On the streets of the capital, the citizens of Somaliland are divided between hope and resignation. Because of the isolation and the global blockade, the, the living standard here is just getting worse and worse every day. The wall has forgotten Somaliland. It's, it's important. It is important. To United Nations to give uh, to give to give you know the recognition for Somaliland. Since I am professor, I am requested a long post uh, to the United Nations, African Union, uh, e uh, EU, and all you know. For example, you know the, the wall to get to give the recognition from the Somaliland since the Somaliland restored peace and stability for the last 30 years. 30 years we're asking why you don't recognize Somaliland. Somaliland, I think, it's not will be recognized because Somalia, they don't want to be recognized so, Somalia. More than 30 years after the de facto state of Somaliland declared its independence, it's still on the margins of the international sphere. But nevertheless, this small republic in the Horn of Africa has managed to prove to the world that building a democratic state and some degree of development can be achieved, even without a large amount of international aid.